You know, yes, I'm wearing my hemp robe. Everybody loves to make fun of me when I wear this very comfortable robe that I made myself. People say I look like a, a, a Jedi or something like that, whatever. I still feel like I look like a tattooed, bald monkey. Uh, <laughs> now, this is a pretty bold video. When you actually make a video, and I think the title of this video is going to be uh, The Secret of uh, Photography or the secret of product photography. That's a really bold statement. And of course, I like uh, pithy little videos, something that's uh, really simple that you can actually remember. I was doing some business photography for a couple businesses' websites, specifically three, but one of them was more of a product shoot of what they make. Um, and that's why I was busy and didn't make videos uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I remembered something that I'd actually not made a video on. It's like, oh my God, this is my old principle of MADL, and uh, I need to make a video about this. I I actually did a search since I got 6,000 videos. I thought, surely I'd made a video about this before because it's a very important concept, and I thought I'd hit upon it, but apparently uh, I have not, uh, unless I did an improper search, but I'm certain I didn't. Anyway, getting to the point, this is the most important, this is most applicable to product photography, but it's also applicable to, it's really applicable to absolutely every aspect of photography, but specifically um, product photography, real estate, and corporate photography, what I mean by corporate, like doing events, taking pictures of their websites. Uh, they have uh, uh, meetups where they actually um, need to uh, show to uh, headquarters what they did, and they need photographic evidence of that. Um, really good photographic evidence. And of course, it's a tax write off, and you know, they actually uh, use those images for interagency uh, images uh, to inform their employees. and. There's actually quite a lot of money in that. But anyway, this is a uh, little an acronym here that you should remember. And there, by the way, before I show you this and talk about this, and yes, I'm getting directly to the point, there is not a single photographer on this earth that is going to say what I'm saying in this video is inaccurate. They might have a slight twist on it one way or another, but nobody, any hardcore professional photographer or otherwise is not going to say that this video is inaccurate. It's like, yeah, that, that guy's right. So this is something that you should actually, uh, and I love making videos like this. I especially like making videos about stuff that nobody else has talked about because usually when someone's talking about something in photography, there's been a thousand other videos by someone else has talked about it. But anyway, this is something extremely important and this is an acronym that I came up with ages ago. This is a MADL and this is for a mood accenture diminution diminution of course is like de-emphasizing kind of like accentuate the positive eliminate the negative you remember how the old song goes m-a-d-l mood accent diminution and lastly is uh, application or uh, uh, lighting we we're talking about lighting of course and this is of course bringing things you know, building the structure of what it is that you've already pre-planned out. And of course, you need to plan this out with your client. There are actually people that actually work like this, and there's some other YouTubers that do product photography. They recommend something that I don't recommend because nobody, by the way, unless you charge for it specifically and make arrangements, is charging for the amount of time that you piss away, yes, on uh, post-production. And what people will do is they'll come up with like 30 different, and if you charge for this, it's okay to do it, but people will do this on their own initiative and they're wasting time, and time is money. They'll, cut, they'll take a product shot and they'll actually take uh, 30 different slants on it using uh, uh, different, um, you know, uh, accents and colors and, you know, uh, you know, drop the shadows, raise the shadows. They'll, uh, you know, give a hundred little different slants on a single image, not literally a hundred, and they're wasting their time. They'll have the client, and this is where clients get confused. If you give too many uh, choices, and most people are not all that intelligent, specifically clients, I shouldn't be saying that. If you give them too many choices, people get angry and confused, and then it actually pisses off the person that did it. It's like, well, I spent a lot of time giving you all these things to choose from. And that's a bad idea. It just confuses the hell out of people. I'm not saying give people less, um, however, you, you kind of are. What you need to do is you need to uh, sit down when you actually make an arrangements on uh, CODB, which is cost over doing business, and everybody is going to do product photography or business or real estate. You need to calculate what your absolute costs are 
okay? And you need to combine that with what you think you're worth or what other people value your worth to be. And of course, that is another uh, basis of something you need to think about. And you need to calculate your cost over doing business. But you need to have a sit down with the, uh, the client and you need to determine what the mood of the shot is going to be. And then by your own uh, conversations with the client, based on what it is that they want to emphasize, and this is a part of the A, Accenture, and of course, uh, diminution, this is about perspective control, I'll talk about all this very, very quickly in a second. Then, of course, you need to make that a reality, and that, of course, is uh, through your lighting and post-production also. Um, but if you could remember this, MADL, mood, accenture, diminution, and lighting, you know, keep that in your thoughts and also you have to have a discussion with your client on the product shot that you're going to do. Let's actually get to that, MADL, mood. You need to have a discussion, uh, and if you don't have that with your client, you need to determine it yourself, but you should always have that discussion with your client. What is the mood that they're going for? Where is the uh, shot going to be placed? Is it just going to be something for their website? Is it going to be something for publication? So you need to know, that. Is it going to be uh, cheery? Is it going to be stark? Do you want something that's just a technical shot? Maybe something with a scale in it. Um, my, uh, my buddy who's doing um, um, medium format shoots for a museum, he needs to, uh, he has an extremely precise lighting setup. He has a scale inserted into every shot. Uh, very technical uh, color balancing and needs to be a uh, hab because you want true reproduction for online viewing of ultra high resolution images of antique or you know uh, uh, ancient pieces of whatever artwork uh, sculptures and whatnot so that's a uh, technical lighting you want the uh, shot to be ominous or dark or stark um, background of course is incredibly impl uh, important as you well know some product shots emphasize only what it is Others will put it in the context of what it is meant to be used in, like this shot may have a beautiful, you know, be taken, uh, the shot may be taken with, uh, you know, sweeping uh, scenery in the background. What is it that you're trying to go for in the mood? Uh, mood, of course, is everything. This discussion has to be made with your client, or you're just going to, you have the most beautiful lighting and the best exposure of the product, but if it doesn't fit within the mood of what the hell the client wants, it's like, well, the client says, well, you know, this is an extremely technical shot and it's perfectly well lit and it shows exactly what our product is, but that's not the look we wanted. When they say not the look we wanted, we're talking about mood. So mood is everything. This has to be uh, planned out precisely with your client. You only need a really a roundabout. And then, of course, it's your uh, job to uh, fulfill that in your mind and give it a great deal of thought. The client wants an ominous... So the client has a product that is, by its very nature, ominous, and I've actually done some products like that. They they want it to look ominous, you know. They don't, you know, you don't like take a uh, a product shot uh, that of a, something that's uh, ominous and make it look diminutive or like cheery. It's like well, this is a product that is ominous. You're not so mood is everything. Accenture, um, highlighting the key features of what something is. It's kind of like. Uh, my buddy, I've got some ring lights over here, and he used to do, rest his soul, he died of cancer. Uh, he'd uh, take uh, uh, portrait shots of, uh, of uh, older ladies, and ring lighting really accentuates, um, well, actually, this is about diminution. Uh, it actually uh, eliminate out a lot of the wrinkles in their face. Ring lighting actually eliminate, you know, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and of course that's the next point. But getting on to accenture, once again, you're talking about the, the lines or the angles, you know, um, accenting, like, is very important for uh, hotels. If you're uh, taking some, and this is, of course, a, a sub-aspect of real estate photography, you're doing interiors, perspective control is everything. You know, this is why I can't believe some people, you know, if you're just doing cheap uh, real estate photography, you know, for listing something online, it's not important. But if you're taking pictures of mega mansions, and, you know, you don't want those vertical lines converging. Perspective control lenses are incredibly important. Also, too, if a hotel wants some awesome pictures and they're paying you the money, we want our dumpy little tiny hotel rooms to look spacious. Every hotel person will tell you the same thing if you're going to do an interior shot of their rooms is they want their small, doesn't even matter even if it's expensive, they're all small, yeah? They want it to look spacious. It's like, well, this is where accenting something using perspective control, right? Yeah. 
You know, use a wide-angle lens, or specifically like a 24 millimeter PC or the new Nikkor, for example, or even the best perspective control lens, the Olympus, I'm not the Olympus, excuse me, the Canon 17 millimeter, to accentuate, well, actually not accentuating, you're actually distorting using perspective control, uh, a tilt shift lens with a wide angle. Using not only a wide angle, but you're using a, a tilt shift lens, so you can actually eliminate out your converging verticals and do post production work, so you actually eliminate out the vignetting and the pin cushioning. You want it to look as best, put your best foot forward. This is what the client is paying you for. They're paying you to know how to do that. You know, nobody wants a super accurate shot of a tiny interior. Nobody, photography has never been about the truth. No hotel chain, for example, wants you to take an accurate shot of the interior of their little dumpy, <laughs> their dumpy rooms. They want it to look spacious. You know, you're using a wide angle lens with perspective control, specifically a PC tilt shift lens. If you're doing the right thing and you're being paid a decent amount of money, you know, that's, that's vital. Um, so accenture, you know, you're accenting uh, the characteristics that the client wants or that you want. And this is not necessarily about product photography. Um, when you're actually setting up a shot or doing a shot, you want to accentuate what it is that you want to emphasize. And of course, you could also do that with your sliders in post-production and you could raise the shadows up. So merely the highlights show if that's the sort of mood that you're going for. Um, diminution. Uh, perspective control, negative shading. I was talking about the guys taking portrait shots of uh, ring lighting, eliminates uh, wrinkles, and the women loved it. He was making money hand over fist, taking pictures of older ladies using a ring light because it takes out the wrinkles. He didn't really have to do... <laughs> he, really, he was not an expert of Photoshop and Lightroom. It's just the ring lighting takes wrinkles out of uh, wrinkled old, uh, old uh, ladies' faces or anybody's old face. Sometimes you want that, like if you got a crusty old sailor, you want to see every wrinkle. But that's part of what you're wanting to emphasize. Women don't want to see that. You know, like if it's a grizzly old guy that looks like a sailor, like some old Popeye character, you want to see all those wrinkles and stuff. So that is what you're accent You're accentuating out the very thing in his face that no woman wants to see, and nor, she, nor is she going to pay you a dime for you to take an accurate photo of her wrinkles in your face. So this is a diminution. So we've gone through mood, accenture, diminution, and of course, lastly. Uh, lastly, uh, we're talking about lighting. Uh, correct placement of lighting, uh, the coloring, you're using any gels or filters. Also to layering, of course, giving depth, like using a background kicker um, to uh, separate out the background uh, from the primary. But this is, of course, also all about mood. What are you trying to do? You know, uh, I'm going to add a blue. I love actually uh, doing time exposures and uh, adding a multicolored lights for Accenture. I think I'm actually pretty good at that. Um, people like that. I'll actually use straws with LED lights and actually accentuate products using straws because with a straw, I can actually paint with light um, exactly what it is I want to accentuate. And of course, I'll use a background kicker with a whatever color. And that color, of course, defines me. You know, red is ominous and angry. You know, blue is, uh, of course, depends on how it's used. Uh, yellow is, of course, a different mood. I mean, so everything, but this is most specific to product photography and corporate and real estate and also to architecture. You know, architecture, you can't tell the sun where to be, so you have to wait for the special time of day you know, to get that shot. People will hang around or come in a certain very narrow window to get the perfect lighting because you're trying to get that mood. So this really applies to all forms of photography, but some things, of course, like wildlife photography, you don't really don't have a lot of control over that, but it could all be reduced down to this. But this is really incredibly important for product photography and it is M-A-D-L, mood, accenture, diminution, and lighting. Mood, of course, you need to determine with your client or what it is that you want the mood to be. You can make something uh, uh, that's a fluffy look ominous, or you can make something that is, is specifically dangerous and ominous look light and fluffy. So you're trying to, and this is, of course, the skill that you are being paid for if you're going to be a working photographer. You need to determine with your client what the hell, where is the shot going to be? Is it going to be for their website, be for a catalog? You need to determine the mood. Now, they're going to give you a narrow parameter. The client usually doesn't know other than something general. Well, I want our product to look, you know, cheerful. It's like, okay, I can work with that. And then, of course, 
you develop in your mind. To make this product look cheerful, I need to determine the correct accenture of what needs to be accented. I need to determine the correct diminution of what needs to be eliminated. Like the, uh, certain products are obnoxiously large and you don't want them to look large. Like a client said, you know, our, our product is large, but we, we want it to look small because that's really important, you know. Uh, perception is reality, as, as the old saying goes. And so, uh, both through perspective control and proper angle placement of taking the shot of what it is that you are planning to either want to do or are paid to do, you know, to, uh, uh, to engage in the diminution of what it is that you are trying to uh, set uh, the view for that uh, subject or object to be. You know, kind of like if someone has a scar on their face, you're going to say, well, turn your cheek this way, right? Eliminate the positive, I mean, eliminate the negative, and accentuate the positive. And of course, lastly is implementation, lighting. So everything is, uh, and this is my little thing, MADL, mood, accenture, diminution, and lighting. And there's not a single person on earth, any photographer, that's going to say that is inaccurate. This guy's video, what he just said. No, everything I just said is uh, palpable, accurate, and it is useful. So if you could just remember MADL and what that stands for, that will help you a lot on everything. Because what you're being paid for is not the monkey press shutter button. You know, nobody's paying you. She's like, well, that guy's got an expensive camera. Monkey press button, click. There's not a single product photographer or professional photographer, you know, unless it's like real estate. You know, go take some pic, click, click, click. Okay, there we go. You know, I paid you thirty dollars to go take a picture <laughs> of a of an ugly uh, an ugly house uh, in the woods, so we could list it on Realtor.com. No, yeah. Other than that, you know, no one's paying you to do this monkey click button click. No, they're paying you to develop these things in your mind for what needs to be, they, they set the mood, or you set the mood, depending on who's paying for the shot, right? When you're being paid, you're supposed to do what the client wants. They determine the mood, then you, it's your job, and that's really what you're being paid. You're not being paid to do this. Click. No, nobody's paying you to be a monkey. Ooh, ooh press monkey, press button. <laughs> you're not being paid to do that. You're being paid to take their idea and translate it into visual reality, right? Yes, of course I'm right. Determine the mood, determine what needs to be accentuated, determine what needs to be eliminated, and then plan out your lighting. Okay, for me to achieve that, I need to put this light over here. I want a blue background kicker over here. I would like some hair light over here. Say it's a person's face, you know. I want to accentuate their red hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine some light behind them, you know, to accentuate their fiery red hair, for example. Of course, that's not a product shot, but... Uh, um, it's that simple. So M-A-D-L is something that anybody could remember. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. And uh, people, people always keep asking me, says, what do you got underneath this robe? It's like, well, I got a tank top, an Adidas tank top with a lot of tattoos <laughs> under this robe. I was like, what are you wearing under that robe? I don't know why people keep asking me that. What do they think I'd be wearing underneath it? Like a spandex body stocking or something? <laughs> <laughs> actually, this is one of the lights that I'll actually put at the end of the straw for painting with light. It's a, uh, a uh, LED. These come in various colors. I'll stick a straw to this, and I can sit there and paint a product. Like, I'll accentuate out this curve. It's like, wow, it's so easy to do. You know, you can get these online. They're just little uh, watch battery-operated LEDs. So useful. Um, I love doing that, actually. Well, I don't really love doing it. I used to love doing it a lot. Now I don't have any time for anything. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you do, please click the link below. But everything I said in this video is accurate, palpable, and undeniable. Importantly so. Mic drop. Peace out, Girl Scout. Bye.